Hello, you beautiful people. So, <clears throat> alright, you guys have been all been bugging about the next step about uh, UNMS and UCRI migration. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to bring you into, uh, so here, we'll just close all this crap. So here's the, uh, this is part of the demo network that I'm running. So you can see here, well, you won't be able to see the names because uh, to block the names in these rows here. But um, you can see the queue entries and the IDs for each account. These are generated um, dynamically by the uh, UNMS system. It actually logs in here every now and again and uh, dumps all the settings in. Um, so now you guys want to see how to add a customer. <sighs> Excuse me. It is late. It is 12.36 a.m. on October 1st, 2020, and I am finally getting around to recording this for you guys. It's been really crazy hectic lately and uh, trying to get some more videos out, right? So first of all, we're in CRM here, right? Okay, so I'm going to click on clients here. We need to create a new client. This is going to create a new client site too, by the way. So let's create one. So I'm going to click on the plus here. Clearly, Tito the destroyer. All right, there we go. Hey, that's funny. Look at the auto populate. Lucy hiking Dexter Township. Okay, so hey, you guys in Michigan? And it doesn't surprise me that 666 I'm in hell comes up as Michigan for some reason. Oh no, that's not me. That's not me being a string discriminatory. All right, so you would put in the customer's name here. We're going to put in their contact email, na at na.com. Why? Because you can invite them into the billing portal. All right, so let's add their phone number now. So, um, um, uh, <laughs> there, how about that? Does that work? Beautiful. All right, so we're filling out the customer profile right here first. Okay, custom attributes. We don't really need any, not yet. Custom billing settings. Eh, no, we don't really need to tweak this at all. Taxes. Well, we gotta pay taxes until we die. You know, unless you get lucky. All right, so we've got the basic customer information here. So send and save. Uh, what this does is it'll actually send an email to the customer uh, with the invite to their, to the dashboard here in the billing portal. Kind of handy, kind of cool. And uh, so now uh, let's uh, save because I'm not gonna send that to some rando at na at na.com. And you know what? If somebody has that email address, I feel really bad for them. You poor bastards. All right, so we've just created a simple customer page. Most of you guys out there there. If you're watching this video, you chances are you're a small business owner. Chances are you've already used QuickBooks or something similar, so you should have no problems understanding what I just did. Um, by the way, in the customer profile, you can actually put pictures for the job site, which is handy as hell because you can take pictures of the router. You can take a picture of the speed test results. I should be doing some videos on how to do customer installs, so I'll be including that soon enough. Um, you basically put as many pictures as you can regarding the customer site into the customer's profile, so you have references protection and proof and whatnot and all that right so anyway here is the customer's profile so now we need to um add service for them all right so let's give tito a plan well i've already created plans in here uh, i'll do another video i guess at some point about how to add a service plan but look at that you can clearly see that in the menu add service plan yeah it's right there so let's put tito on the uh let's put tito on the 100 meg package okay there you go so you're on the 100 meg package that's pretty cool eh <laughs> All right, so now that they're in there, we just simply save. Pretty cool, eh? So now they've got their profile, and now that's going to generate uh, the queue once the rest of the information is put in here, okay? Um, so now we've got this. We've got a client site creative. Look, client site inactive. So now if I click on this... We've gone over to UNMS. Is that cool? And why are we here now? Because we need to put their equipment in here. All right, so we're gonna add the device. Now, I've already added their device previously. It's already in here somewhere. Um, where is it? Uh, should just be able to pull it out. Uh, let's just go over to the devices here. Okay, it's gonna be a new one. It's gonna be, I know what site it's gonna be under, so I'm just gonna go to that site. All right, so we're here. I go to stations. Here we go. Ah, here it is. Tito the Taco Destroyer. All right, let's add that to its appropriate site. Right. Look, the add button. Wow, it's connected to the system and not added to anything yet. <laughs> All right, let's put the uh, password in. Jesus Christ. I've got the late night sillies. All right, and we're going to put you in. Here's his profile right here. Destroyer, Tito the. <laughs> Assign. Okay, Tito the taco destroyer will connect within a moment and will be available on the list of good serve uh, devices, whatever. All right, so now that's going to add it. So let's go back to the customer sites here. See the little house with the person in it? Yeah, that's where you want to go. Now let's go to Tito. All right, so we're under Tito. So we're just waiting for his device to uh, connect. See, look. So that should be in here momentarily. Yay. And then we need to add the client's router. Now, you could just simply have their CPE in here um, because I actually have a setting enabled in um, UNMS here. I'll show you. Where is it? So if I go to network, see the traffic shaping options here? Right now, I've got a set for gateway because I'm using queues. But if I set it for gateway and CPE, it'll push the traffic shaping uh, rules to the CPEs rather than just creating queues for them, okay? Which can be really, really handy, by the way. All right, so let's see here. Where are the devices? I don't see it 
in there yet. It doesn't surprise me really that much. So let's go back to uh, this guy here and uh, make sure that it's been added. All right. Okay, I thought we added this. Hmm. I'm just going to, if this happens, by the way, let's let's do some quick troubleshooting. I'm going to try to uh, log into it just to make sure that I didn't bugger up the password on it. So you and t That's why it didn't work. Okay. I got my password wrong. No problem. Let's go back over. We're going to add it again. Okay. Set credentials. There we go. And then I'm going to choose the site. Tito Destroyer. Tito the Taco Destroyer. Because Tito loves destroying tacos. Who doesn't love destroying tacos? Right? God, I could go to Taco Bell and put it back now. And then, you know, blast it all out into the sewage system. Uh, you know, no more than maybe three hours after consuming that filth. All right. So here we go. We're going to go back to Tito the Taco Destroyer's uh, profile. And you'll see now that there's a radio in here. Okay. So now if I go back over to CRM, I should be able to go over to Tito's profile. So let's go to Tito here. Uh, Tito the Destroyer of Tacos. Now under here now, you can see that he's got his uh, client site. Where'd it go? Services. I'll click on services. There you go. Client site online. See the green checkbox? Everything's happy here. His radio is in there. Or hers. Maybe it identifies as a helicopter. I don't know. Who am I to say? Alright, so we now have their CPE in here. So now, UNMS has the ability to uh, generate traffic shame rules for them. So if I go back in here to the queues, uh, as soon as it pushes the uh, pushes out the uh, updates, you'll see it inside. So Tito the Taco Destroyer. In the meantime, though, uh, we need to add the router for good measure. So let's click on his CPE. Uh, excuse me. So this is a little trick, by the way, that is going to be extremely useful to you uh, when you're trying to please check the height and location of devices are set correctly. Or, uh, honestly, I could care less now. So anyway, we need to find out what the router is. And I believe that Tito the Taco Destroyer has a Linksys WRT 3200ACM. Yeah, he's one of those guys who blew way too much money on a consumer grade router. <coughs> Rather than buying smart, yeah, smart being. Okay, so we're just gonna um, open the radio here, the dashboard. And by the way, um, looking at Tito here, um, we can actually, sorry, I keep wanting to click on Tito. Can you, can you just give me Tito here, you thing, stupid thing? Just one Tito. Can you just just give me, can I just, can I just have Tito, you stupid piece of shit? Okay, so I should be able to click on stats and stuff. And with, under Tito here, I can now log all the information regarding their radio. So if Tito's kids are pulling back every single ounce of bandwidth that they have available to them, you're going to be able to find that in here. It's very, very handy. Um, because with UNMS, obviously it's designed for ubiquity by ubiquity. Um, it is logging everything that it can from the radio, and it's actually doing that, I think, through HTTPS. Um, yeah, so it's basically pulling constant polling from the radio to record your uh, signal strengths, your chains and imbalances, um, throughput, basically a lot of very handy metrics, which is awesome because if you have a customer call and complain and they say, you know what, I'm paying for the 15 meg package and I don't, I can't watch Netflix. You can go in there and see, holy crap, let's go look at their uh, signal strength. Wow, their signal strength's great. Oh, they got a great connection. Oh, their CPU and RAM looks great. Their chains are perfect, they're fine, right? But then you can look down here and you might see that on their ethernet interface that the maximum throughput you've ever seen on this radio that's on a 15 meg plan is like two megs. Wow, there's something wrong there that you're going to have to investigate. So you can go down and check the rest of the stats. Let's see what the link capacity shows up as. Well, in this case here, it's 260. But in the case of the hypothetical scenario where you've got like a radio with a customer complaining that's running on it that says that they're only getting three megs out of the 15 they're paying for, you might see that your wireless link's looking like shit and it's down at like negative like 85 or something, right? Eh, either way, we're getting off topic anyway. This is more stuff I could probably go into at a later date if you really want me to. So anyway, we've got the customer site now. We've got the customer's radio. I'm going to log into Tito to the Taco Destroyer's radio here. We're going to open the web UI because I want to add their personal router, their Linksys. I want to add that to their profile. Why do I want to do that? Because I want to make sure that um, we can properly traffic shape that stupid thing. Okay, so let's see what we got here. So I'm going to, I'm in the radio right now. I'm in Tito the Taco Destroyer's radio. I'm going to click on more details, okay? Now, <clears throat> this is handy as hell because I can now go to the bridge table, okay? What do I see in here? Well, by the way, ARP table too. <laughs> you know, this will show you things. First of all, bridge table. <laughs> LAN interface. I'm seeing a MAC address, the sole MAC address on the LAN 0. Clearly, that's going to be the only device that is connected to LAN 0 on this radio. How is that handy? That is more than likely Tito's Linksys. Let's take a look at the bottom of the MAC address here. Hey, what do you know? It's the MAC address of his router. I have confirmed that. So what am I going to do with that now? I'm going to copy that. Cool. Now let's go over to the router. Okay. And I'm going to go over here. And we're going to go to the DHCP server. And I'm going to look. I'm actually, okay. So in a normal DHCP server, you're going to see something like this, right? So what I'm going to do now is click filter. And I'm going to, this is a microtech thing that irritates the shit out of me, by the way. Yeah, let's open a notepad. Oh, it didn't copy, period. So that was a ubiquity thing this time. Okay. Hey, is it ubiquity or is it Windows being stupid? 
Let's go over here now. We're going to filter. So I'm going to click on the funnel here. And we're going to look for active MAC address here. I'm going to paste it, right? There we go. Look at that. Oh, what? That's weird. He called his router a blue turtle. <laughs> if there's anything gross or sexual about that, please tell me because it would be so funny to, you know, figure that out. All right. So now that we found it, let's uh, make it static. So I'm right clicking going make static. So now we've got the uh, ID for this guy, right? The IP address. So I'm going to put a comment on here. Tito, the taco destroyer. Yes. All right. So we've just added that into the router now. Okay. I'm just going to, for good measure, make a copy of the IP address here because we're going to need it anyway, right? All right. So we've got Tito in here. If I turn off the filters now, you're going to see that the uh, IP address has now been made into a static internal lease. Let's go back over to Tito's site. So I'm going to go back over to UNMS here. Let's go to his little housey here. He's there, he's a little housey, see? He's a little person in a housey, it's so cute. All right, now let's add a device. <clears throat> Third party, we're going to put the IP address in for this thing, okay? And we're going to call this one Blue Turtle. All right, we can put more stuff in here after, by the way. So, um, SNMP community, no, there's not really. So I'm going to add this now. So this is the customer's router, and we need to correct the topology, which it should probably do on its own. But, you know, sometimes we run into problems with stuff like this. All right, okay, here we go. There's the router right here now what I'm gonna do actually is I'm actually just going to there we go um, topology this is just for good measure I'm gonna click on links here and uh, sorry I'm getting ahead of myself let me just click on blue turtle for a second okay so we've got Ethernet one here I'm going to add the Mac address in it okay please do this there's a few reasons for this one of which is that the software will keep track of things a little bit better if you're using an edge router um, this will actually I believe this will ensure that the lease will always remain the same for this that's what you want. Okay, so now that we've got this as well, I can also ping it to see if it's online, right? So we can monitor it. And I'm going to put in here what it is. It's a Linksys. By the way, I can turn off enable ping if it's dropping ping for responses externally because with a lot of customer routers, they will actually drop pings externally, just to let you know. So this is a Linksys, WRT, uh, 3200 ACM. Whoa, hello. There we go. And I'm just going to turn off enable ping and I'm going to save this now. All right, there we go. So that should save all the good stuff. Okay, so now that that's actually set up and we've actually got all the information about that stuff, we can um, go over here to the client site and I can set up my device links here. So I'm just going to click on the little, by the way, that's going to be red because I enabled ping and I just turned it off again. But I can actually, uh, let me see here. Hello, you're supposed to be able to let me do this. Data link layers, uh, blank, there we go. I should be able to actually pair these together. But uh, let's just see here. Am I going to make a fool out of myself? May not be able to do it over here. Hmm. It's odd. Yeah, it's not gonna let me do it like I do in the air, like I would in the other sections. All right, no problem. Either way, the site is now registered. Uh, the software now knows that this is the customer's router and this is the customer's CPE. Okay. So now, uh, if this has just done a push, I'm actually going to go over to the CRM section here again, and the customer site is now configured. So we're going to go over here to our plugins. Let's see here, and I'm just going to check something because I wouldn't normally do this. This is just for the sake of you guys. Okay, so Microtik QSync plugin. Okay. Oh, there's an update for it. Sweet. That's what I've been waiting for because there's been issues with uh, newer Microtiks in this. Okay, so this is set to update every hour. Okay, but I should be able to force it. So I'm gonna go see here. When did it last execute? I'm going to execute it manually right now just so I can push the uh, settings out to the main router. So this will take a minute or so and then we should see it populate. So let's go back over here now that uh, Tito's in place and we're gonna bring up queues. And as soon as this pushes in, we should see it. Okay, customer do sign, whatever. <laughs> yep, where we wait. You're gonna push those settings out, the big fat log. Mm. God, ADHD is a curse. Come on, that, uh, 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 that, that, did you see that? Did you see that in the logs? Ha, it just pushed everything. Okay, so now you'll see here, you got to see, you probably saw that before I did because I was actually looking at uh, this when this happened. So if you look here, simple queue added by UNMS, look, it logged in via the API here. So UNMS is now logged into the micro ticket, it's pushed the queue. So what it's done here now that it has the IP address of uh, Tito's uh, Linksys is it has pushed a queue entry in here. Okay, and look, 25 meg by 100 meg there. So that's what I wanted you guys to see. Okay, so that's happened. That is now working. Okay, so now this is the cool thing. Now that that's in there, if we go back over to network here, there we go. We'll go to client sites here and we'll go to Tito the destroyer. There we go. And there's the devices. Oh, look, is it behaving now? Yes, because I disabled enable ping. If you really wanted to monitor the customer's router, log into it and enable, uh, uh, allow ICMP response from, uh, WAN interface. If the customer is on behind CGNet, by all means, you can do that. No problem. If they're on a, a public IP, you can still do it. It just means that they can be P, uh, ping of death. 
if you know it's a gamer's home or whatever but it's very handy because you can keep an eye on the site to make sure that everything's happy there so there you go that's all configured we're going to go back over to tito the destroyer once again here's their cpe here is their router and again there's a couple of ways you can uh, push throughput or traffic shaping. One is through the CP itself. One is through the queue on the Microtech. You guys wanted to see the queue on the Microtech, so it's done. Okay, now let's go back over to CRM for just one second, and then we're done this long, tedious video that you guys have been kicking me to finish, okay? <laughs> All right, so we're going to head back over here, and um, let's go to clients for a second. All right, and we'll go over to Tito the Destroyer. I just want to show you from the other side of things. Okay, so Tito's stuff's all in here now, right? Can't see the device. One more time, if I click on the services, it'll take us over here, and it'll show. Perfect. I don't have NetFlow installed on this UNMS instant yet. Once I master installing OpenFlow and Microtech and getting it working, I will do a video on that. But um, as you guys know, I'm focusing more on network engineering and hardware level uh, engineering for sites more than I'm focusing on building systems right now. And at some point, uh, I will be making an attempt to learn all sorts of different building systems, especially UNMS, which everybody seems in love with. So that being said, um, there's all sorts of handy things in here. We even have a ticketing system for people who are having issues. But one of the cool things about this is that the customer can actually go in here and they can change their plan. So here's the active plan right now, right? But you can change this plan if you really want to. So now because you've actually got their equipment registered into their profile here in UNMS, I can click edit and I can change the plan that they're on. So I can put them on the 50 meg plan. And once I do that, it'll push the change again out to the Microtech. So it'll move them over to the 50 meg plan. And you can set that to do at a specific day or you can have it do it immediately. Pretty cool, eh? So basically what you've done here is you no longer have to go into your Microtech and manually do this sort of stuff. You don't have to do this anymore. Your billing system is now doing this all for you, which frees up time for you. That's what's important is you need to focus on building your WIS, making your customers happy, okay? If you have to babysit your network and worry about like daily, weekly, or monthly outages, then um, you need to address those and ensure that you aren't having those outages because you really should have no downtime, especially if you build your network well. So there you go, folks. That is how you do it. <clears throat> that is how you add a client site to UNMS and add the devices to it. I'm sorry it took me so long to get this video done. It's probably going to need to be a few more days now because um, the amazing Yuya who does my editing is going to have to go in here and remove, you know, like white out some of the uh, some of the other customer stuff that's in there because we don't want to um, expose uh, my beta testers for who they are. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, tell your friends. And if you have uh, any requests about videos that you want to see done or, you know, if you need help with anything, by all means, leave it in the comments below. And uh, you can also also hit me up on the Miss Fix It Facebook page and uh, I'm always looking for ideas for content to create. So have a great night guys. Hope you enjoyed and uh, we'll catch you later. Mm, ciao Bella.